Among economists, to what extent is there a consensus that the house is on fire? Um, in terms of how Greta uses it, so well, the kind of climate. Uh, you say yeah. there's basically, um, it's in, in trouble. I mean, the problem is that there's this, if the question is amongst economists, mm -hmm. there's a lot of kind of introspection about economic theory, where it's gone wrong, and there's a movement, really, uh, about rethinking economics, and there's a bit of a danger there, because economists love to show how mathematical and scientific they are compared to, you know, the sociologists and the anthropologists. Physics and, and the, still, yeah. Right. And, and, and so, unfortunately, part of the rethinking economics movement has kind of bought into that and is trying to make economics more user-friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea is there's too much math, we need to make it much more about kind of real life. And the problem is that it's not too much math, it's the wrong math. It's math from Newtonian <laughs> physics. And it's all about you know, equilibria and unique equilibria and averages matter and the representative agent. There was all sorts of other mathematical tools that could have been used, for example, from biology. In fact, lots of the agent-based modeling today, but that's kind of ghettoized in economics. Mm -hmm. It's not out there at the mm -hmm. center. Um, uses more kind of metaphors and, and um, mathematics from biology, but also my thesis actually was using um, replicator dynamics. So, hmm. you know, distance from mean dynamics. Um, in economics, we assume averages. So if you, you know, in biology, you couldn't explain change if everyone looked the same, right? Distance from mean, you show your growth by how different you are from me, how different mm -hmm. your fitness is. And yet this focus on averages and representative uh, mm -hmm. uh, actors in economics is, is fundamentally different from how, you know, growth and change is looked at in other sciences. And so I think what's really important, and this is what I, I guess I was trying to do also in the book, is to kind of to debunk the assumptions underlying the models mm -hmm. versus to say, you know, get rid of the math. Um, but in terms of the house being on fire with climate change, unfortunately, and this is my point about just seeing it as patching up different types of market failures, it's not that we don't need the carbon tax. Of course mm -hmm. we need carbon taxes, but you know, not really seeing the green mm -hmm. transition and the green revolution that's required as an active market co-creation and market shaping process across that whole system is a lost opportunity. We should remember that big revolutions in the previous um, waves of technology, for example, mass production, would never have had the effect that they did across the whole economy without also really bold demand side policies. So suburbanization was fundamental to the power of mass production mm -hmm. to really affect production, distribution, consumption, and productivity. Mm -hmm. And what we need today is the equivalent of these kind of demand side policies like suburbanization, but in a green direction. And we're not really getting that, except in some isolated cases. Mm -hmm.